Hello and welcome to the second episode of Stretch the Mind. So originally, uh, the midnight jazz ones were supposed to be Stretch the Mind also, but I think they're a little too crazy for what I talk about in Stretch the Mind. And uh, so I've kind of just, I don't know what they are. They're just, look, they're just a child that we don't talk about. We don't refer to in the family. They're just something else that we don't want to talk about, but that's fine. So the reason I'm making the second episode of Stretch the Mind is because I was talking about something, which I'm about to get into, to my girlfriend, and she didn't really care that much because it's just the rambles of a crazy person. So I am, this isn't going to be like the traditional uh, way I wanted to do things. For example, I wanted to do things and explain it into a neutral way and hopefully just get you thinking about something. This one is going to be very biased, very biased indeed, but you know, we'll figure it out. So the first thing I'm going to be talking about is the English language. So, uh, when my biggest problem started with the English language was when I was thinking about the word you. So a common thing that would go with you would be I. So, and you would spell I just simply with an I. You would spell you on the other hand, Y-O-U. So, but that Y-O-U doesn't spell you. Y-O-U spells you. Who the fuck honestly did that? How can we spell I with an I and we spell you with a yo? So, it there's just, there's no, like, there is no logic to that whatsoever. The second thing I want to bring up is that we have letters in the alphabet that are exactly the same, that sound exactly the same, but we use it in different words anyway. For example, C and K both make the sound K. Why do we do that? Why, like... If we have these two letters with two different completely symbols, but they sound exactly the same, and then we've got there, and there is spelt T-H-E-R-E, and we pronounce it there because the E goes over the R and makes that, the first E, a longer sound. Why couldn't we just use one of the fucking C or the K symbols to fucking sort that shit out there? Like, ooh, I can feel it. I can feel the rage. Anyway. It's fine. Second thing I want to bring up about the English alphabet and all of its words and languages that are involved is the word man. Now, this is a bit of a topical one because I might stretch stretch into being sexist or not, but we will find out. So, we have man, woman, and human. Why don't we just switch man? Because we already pronounce like mankind like that is known as being like all the people is just known as mankind so why don't we switch just human and man wouldn't that make so much sense because if we say female then it'd be female and then we could say hue man which would mean man which is what it is now and then man could just mean everyone so for example female Hue male and male. And male means the all the people, like all humankind. I shouldn't say human. Anyway, that is my rant done with the English alphabet. I just need to get that out, eh? Now, I'm going to be talking about something that could possibly fuck up my grades, but it's fine because I'm going to be talking about university. Now, I don't know if people know me, but... I am not a fan of the university I attend. I My review on what's happening in this university, it might not happen to everyone, but I feel like it is something... I feel like it's opinion that people who are going to go into this subject need to know. So... This doesn't apply to QUT. This doesn't apply to any of the other universities. This applies to me attending Griffith University. I am currently studying film skills. Film school. Anyway, so the first thing I want to talk about 
is the different subjects I'm doing and how I've spent the first week interpreting them. So the first subject I've done is reading the moving image. Now, when we watched the lecture, this is my biggest problem with the like with some of these subjects in film school, that all of these lectures, some of them have a, like a quite good groundwork for them, and they have potential to for people to actually learn something from them. But the people who run the course just don't know what to do with it. They don't know how to do it. So. For example, reading the moving image, we learned about, it's all about learning how, like what different camera angles you can use, like understanding and naming them, naming the different angles that you use, the different compositions, all that kind of stuff. But what we did in the lecture was we watched a film. Now this lecture, I believe goes for about two or three hours. And we spent the first hour talking about the different cinema language and understanding miss and scene and uh, editing and like sort of just getting an understanding of if you were going to write a review, how would you talk about the cinema? Like, how would you talk about your review in a professional way? So we spent the first hour of the lecture doing that. Then we spent the next two hours watching a film. What, like, I'm about to move on to a next thing, which will further explain why that shouldn't be done. But anyway, I'm going to talk about the tutorials we did in the moving image, because in the tutorials, all we did was get to know each other. And then we had 10 minutes left of the tutorial, and we, they decided to cram as much in about what we did during the lecture and about the film we watched for that 10 minutes. Listen, I can guarantee you, if I'm going to, going to be a first year student or whatever, sure, maybe reading in the moving image, I should get to know everyone. Because, like... I'm a first year student, this is the first class I'm going to attend. So yeah, it's fair enough, we get to know each other. But you, you don't spend 20 minutes getting to know each other. At the end of the tutorial, they expected us to get like, oh, sign each other's paperwork on who uh, fucking lived in this town. So it was just a joke. Anyway, so now, but now Australia Movie Industries, which is another one of the subjects I'm doing. The first, it's about like understanding Australia film, which is fine because if you're in a film school and you wanted to make an Australian film for an international market, you'd want that film to have sort of an Australian style to it. Otherwise, it's just not going to, you're not going to be recognized. Uh, so the first part of the lecture, we were talking about a movie and Essentially, she was she was rambling on about this movie and all this stuff. So we were like listening to it. We watched a bit of a behind the scenes with the cast, and then they decided to play the movie. They were gonna we were gonna watch the movie again. Fucking hell, there's a bird outside. Just ignore the bird. Anyway, the movie didn't work. So no matter how hard they tried, the movie just couldn't work. So what did they do? They said we can leave early. And that movie was supposed to take up two hours of the lecture. So we got a two hour early mark on a lecture. I'm not complaining that it's a bad thing that we got out early. I'm just saying, why make your lectures two hours long if you don't have the substance to keep talking about the subject you're doing for the time you've set it? Just do it for an hour. Tell us to watch the movie. Like, make it optional if we want to watch the movie or not, because it should be left to the students to how much they give a shit about this particular subject. Anyway, one of the last... Uh, fucking hell, that bird is going fucking nuts outside. Anyway, the last subject was documentary. And... the It went for roughly the same time as reading the moving image did, and so did Australian Industries. But the the documentary teacher could actually talk throughout the three hours he had designated for him. He could actually keep talking about what was going on and what was he and what he was doing. It actually had some kind of material for it. We were understanding what he was talking about. He was giving us examples of previous year's work. So we actually knew what we were going to be in for. Once the lecture finished, we went to the tutorial. And the tutorial was just pretty much asks talking about one of our ideas and then 
seeing if that idea was okay. But the problem with that was, was that during that tutorial, you need to get in groups for documentary. And like, you need to get in a group and then say your idea and then see if it's okay. But whatever, it's fine. I, I still enjoyed the lecture. Then we went to the workshop and the workshop was a little scary because we actually got to view students work and then the teacher asked us whether we should pass them or not. I don't know, it's just a bit weird to view other people's work and then criticize, like, it's kind of like looking at, it's kind of like giving the baby a ball and then judging it because it can't throw the ball very far. Of course it's not going to throw the ball very far because it's a baby, it's still learning. So why are you sitting us down and telling us like, should this person pass or not? It's rough. It's rough for those people. But, you know, I guess that's kind of the industry that they want us to get into. But, documentary. Uh, the majority of the subjects you're going to do in Griffith Film School is you're going to do a lot of group work in film. And I feel like the only subject that you can film individually by yourself would be documentary. So it's kind of strange that documentary isn't an individual filming work because most of the time when you go out there and you film, you will be doing documentaries by yourself. A lot of people have. Like the guy for Dear Zachary, he had a lot of help, but the he, he ventured out by himself a lot and filmed a lot of the stuff. Uh, another guy went over to Cairo during the riots and he did that entire documentary just by his handy cam and what he could sound record. But instead for the documentary, we have to, we have a guy for sound recording, a guy for like editing, a guy for sound recording, a guy for producing, you know, there's just a lot of stuff. I'm probably going to cut that part out because I actually don't know if any of those facts are true, but that's fine. Anyway, that's my experience with Griffith. And that's my experience with the English language. It's good to get it off my chest because I don't know why. It was just secretly annoying me this whole time. But it's it's all G now. So I hope you guys will think about it. I hope you guys will agree with me. And if not, then tell me. And I will fucking snap my fingers twice and see if I can back argue. Anyway, thanks for watching.